Welcome to Color Chat, a sit-down interview where we talk about how color plays into the design of BenQ Display Solutions. Today, we're joined by Chris Bai, BenQ Senior Color Expert. Chris, good morning. Good morning, Mariana. Thanks for having me here. So we want to start things off with a segment called Chris Bio, where we get to learn more about you and your color expertise. You have a PhD in color science from NTUST. Before that, you finished your master's in color science at the University of Leeds and your bachelor's of computer and electrical engineering at the University of British Columbia. Right now, you're one of the chief ISO experts for the graphic arts industry and the vice chair of the display working group of the International Color Consortium, or the ICC. Those are some pretty impressive credentials. Thank you. For those uninitiated, what does the ICC do and what are your responsibilities as the vice chair? So ICC stands for International Color Consortium and it's an industry uh, standard body. So basically we develop color standards for all the industry. We meet three times a year to discuss a lot of um, color problems that we meet every day. For example, why the printout doesn't, um, why does it match uh, the, the image on the uh, displays? Okay, or why does this display display differently than the other displays? Okay, like this kind of problems. And so we try to develop um, a solution um, to tackle these kind of problems using ICC profiles. Um, so that's why we need three times a year and talk to a lot of different uh, manufacturers and companies to let everybody to agree on a solution. And as my responsibility to the um, this vice chair of the display working group is make sure the latest display technology can be incorporated into this color standards. So what does it take to become a color expert? Do you need any specific certification? I won't say certification, but mm -hmm. you have to be first, you have to be normal color vision first. Okay. If you have any color deficiency, it will kind of like impair your judgment of color. So normal color vision is a must for your for, um, color expert. Then you have to go through a lot of training for training your sense of uh, color sensitivity. So we need to do a lot of color comparing to judge about like, okay, which hue of color this, this is? What's the difference between this color patches and that, that color patches? Can you tell the difference? Even that is very minute difference. So we have went, we went through a lot of this kind of training. Okay, we want to put your skills to the test. Oh. So we have a little color quiz for you. Okay. It's short, but it's very tricky. Are you up for the challenge? Nervous now. Okay, sure. <laughs> You'll do away. great. You'll do great. All right, let's go. All right, so for the first one, you have to select the lightest shade of blue. Mmm, the tricky one. Okay, I have to go this for one? this one. Yes. Confirm. Confirm. Correct. All right. All right, now we have three. Ah. Okay, for this one, I'll go for this. This one? Middle one. Okay. And then followed by this one. This one? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and this one. This one. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yes. Wow. 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 Okay. Very impressive. A ten out of ten. I should get a raise for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's really hard, but if you have a good display, it mm -hmm. really helps because it can distinguish the, all the hues very nicely and then uh, gives you a better edge to do that. So why is color so important? Because color can tell us a lot of information. For example, it can tell us this food is safe to eat or not. And also it can tell us a lot about this personality of a person. Mm -hmm. So color is very important in all fields of um, applications. For example, in the shop, right? So you do need some bright and the contrasty lighting to show off the color of your merchandise. So people will likely be more likely to buy the merchandise or the stuff you're showing off. And in some cases, 
for example, like in the meeting, mm -hmm. if your PowerPoint, the content is more vibrant, more saturated colors, then people are more likely to be drawn to your presentation will not fall asleep, mm -hmm. right? So they'll be more excited about your presentation and uh, more likely to pay attention to your, to your speech. This content um, has to be delivered on a really good display, which can display accurate color, mm -hmm. okay? Because no matter if you have um, really good content, but if you don't have a good display, which can display accurate color, then there's no use with your good content. Okay, let's get into color at BenQ. So people may not know this, but we actually have a color technology lab here at BenQ headquarters. Can you tell us what you do in the lab? Really, I can't. This is top secret. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Yes, we do have a top color technology lab at the headquarters, and this is really uh, different than the other brands because we focus on color technology what is color technology is basically we do a lot of research in color science and also we do how to calibrate colors accurately. So we calibrate the monitors, we calibrate the public displays, we calibrate um, the projectors. So we basically do all sort of um, research kind of things like that. And this calibration works under um, different illuminations like with um, office illuminations or dark room. Mm -hmm. So basically our lab is basically a huge dark room. Oh. So it's a good place to take naps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this is uh, what we do in the, not naps, okay, <laughs> but, naps. but uh, research, okay. color technology research. So how much is your team involved in terms of color decisions related to BenQ displays and other solutions like our monitors, projectors, and conference cameras. All right, our teams are very heavily involved in public displays and the conference cameras, but um, we're not very much involved in monitors and projectors because monitors and projectors, they have their own color um, team to do their color adjustments. But we gave guidance to them to how to do um, color adjustments for, the, for example, photo modes or cinema modes for mm -hmm. their monitors or projectors. So we consult them to do that, but we, we're not doing actual the, uh, color adjustment for them. But for public displays and also the conference cameras, we actually do that. Okay. Yes. But uh, like I said, for the, all the other color researches, we do um, cross um, product lines. Okay, for example, how to match colors between a projectors and a displays. Okay, we do that. Okay. So we focus on how to integrate all of our product lines together. So rather than uh, just one particular product lines. Okay. What considerations go into designing the color settings for BenQ solutions? So for example, do we factor in customer feedback and psychology? Or do we do any prior testing with test groups? Yes, when we actually design the color settings for the displays or public displays, um, we do a lot of theory testings, okay? So for example, we do have a theory that um, we would like to have this kind of settings and then we um, try to break it down as a parameters and then we formulate it and then we test with a test group, small test group with it. And then uh, we test run it if they are satisfied and then we popularize it, mm -hmm. okay? And then we collect the feedback from the customer. So see if they like it, and at which point they like it, what kind of um, feature they like it, and so we keep it. Okay, if there's something they need to, uh, we need to improve it, then we improve it in the next version. So this is an ongoing process. And we love their feedback because uh, with our small test group, we kind of can get some feedback, but probably not enough feedback for the whole like uh, user around the world yeah. right that's not possible but with this kind of like procedure and this um this workflow i think it's a it's a win-win situation all right so speaking of color settings one of the key color modes we have for the sl series which we also integrated into xsign designer and some of our monitors is the pantone color mode so what is the significance of pantone in the industry why is it such a big deal? 
All right, Pantone is a big deal for the designer because it's a com color communication tool. It's um, actually a deck of color patches. So designer can use that to communicate color worldwide. So basically every designer has a deck of co Pantone color. And then um, they can use that color um, number. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is a number associated with each color checker or color patches. So they will know which color they're talking about. They can use that deck of color to um, communicate. So this is the significance about this Pantone, okay? And then, because um, right now everything is digital mm -hmm. right now. So the deck of color I'm talking about is a hard copy. It's on paper or on plastic mm -hmm. or on fabric, okay? It's hard to carry around, okay? But everything right now is design is digital. Okay, so our Pantone mode is designed specifically for dis every display everything on the screen. So Pantone mode can display all the co Pantone colors uh, very, uh, I would say, accurately. Yes. So this okay. is the significance of having the Pantone mode on the SL series. So we always keep highlighting that the SL series has different color modes for different scenarios. So here we want to discuss how they came to be. We already talked about the Pantone color mode. Now when we say Pantone mode, do we mean that we're only using the colors found in Pantone swatches? Can you clear that up for us? Sure, I can. Um, the Pantone color mode is actually based on Pantone color swatches, mm -hmm. but it can also display many other colors as well. We okay. use Pantone color swatches to validate the accuracy of this color mode. So then that's why we use Pantone color swatches to reference it and to make sure everything is accurately reproduced. So we can be confident to say that all the other colors can be represented very nicely and very accurately. Yeah. The next one we have is the MBook mode, which stands for MacBook. What makes MacBook screen colors so different from those shown on non-Mac screens? Why is it so important for us to have this mode? All right, because we understand that a lot of designers is using MacBook, mm -hmm. okay? And MacBook, they have their own color, okay? And then um, this is from our custom feedback. Our customer would like to have their MacBook, which is a small screen, maybe a 13 inch or 15 inch, to extend it to a larger screen for that. So that's why we have this idea. So if we can simulate the colors on the MacBook to a larger screen, like this 43 inches, so they have, will have this advantage of have working more efficiently than on the 15 inch screen, yeah. okay? So this, what, this is what we call it extending the workspace. So uh, we can have consistent color across the screen. So they will not have this gap between like, okay, uh, MacBook screen and then non-MacBook color. Up next, we have the other two modes, cinema and photo mode. So what is the main difference of these modes to the default color mode of our BenQ displays? Why did we decide on these settings for moving and still images? Do they highlight or accentuate anything in the display content? Yes, actually um, the photo mode is designed for viewing the photo content, the still images. Mm -hmm. And the cinema mode is designed for, uh, for movie, okay, the movie content. In a way, photo mode are, we design the philosophy of more, a little bit more saturated color, but then it still represents something in the nature, more realistic image. So it's not overly saturated like Disney color. Mm -hmm. But cinema mode is, um, because the, the image is moving. So we try to avoid the uh, artifact of having like jittering or other unsmooth um, moving uh, artifacts. So these are the two main features that we have in for uh, the photo mode and also the uh, cinema mode. Okay. All right, so that's all the time we have for today. Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us about color. I'm sure most of us learned a lot during this session. Now, before we close things off, can you tell us about what we can expect from the BenQ Color team in the future? Yes. As a matter of fact, we just finished off two very interesting projects. One is the conference camera, 
DVY series and one is the video bar. So for these two projects, um, we do a lot of um, color adjustment. Uh, we solve the pain point of the uh, cameras can't reproduce the colors really faithfully right now. And as a matter of fact, uh, for the skin tone, um, current cameras doesn't really um, have really good reproduction. And the yellow color and the greenish color, they don't re good really good. So um, we try to solve this pain point using our color adjustment techniques. So if you have a chance, you definitely need to check out these two products and you'll find a great improvement over these two, um, these range of colors. So I think that's all the thing I can say for now. Great. Again, thank you so much, Chris. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. I'm Mariona from the PDP team, and we'll see you next time.